thank you so much, everyone, for coming out tonight. This is a really, um, a really uh, wonderful set of presentations that we have tonight. Um, I'm just talking about the studies program here, um, and these are the um, senior custom presentations for environmental studies students here at NYU. Um, this is kind of the culminating experience of um, the environmental studies undergrad education. And we really do ask a lot of our students. It's basically, um, we ask them to uh, pretend they graduated already and be junior professionals. Um, and a project and there's a supervision of an environmental professional. Um, and these projects are all unique in that they're, they're integrated. They really pull together all the different disciplinary and interdisciplinary ways of understanding that, um, that they've learned over the years. Uh, they're applied um, these projects um, in various forms of every day. Context. Uh, they have to deal with all the messiness of how to make these things actually work. Um, and they're project oriented. They're discrete um, in scope um, and are a very specific kind of area. Um, and we have three different uh, topics tonight, and I'll let the instructors introduce each of them. And just one quick note, what's really helpful uh, for each of the groups is if you could take three of these handouts. And for each group, we have to check off the subject's title. Um, <laughs> and Electronic waste's favorite type of music. Like, right. metal. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. Uh, yes, right. Thank you. Thank you. So to get right into it, what is the problem with e-waste? That is electronic waste. Basically, electronic waste contains valuable reusable materials such as metals, plastics, and other components, which are typically thrown away instead of recycled. It also contains very hazardous contents on occasion, such as heavy metals, liquids, and chemicals, and things like that. And very often, our e-waste is shipped to developing nations, such as China and India, where workers are not protected by laws and aren't aware of the chemical dangers they're being exposed to. In America, we have a very high consumption of planned obsolete materials in the past few decades, which has accumulated into our waste stream, uh, resulting in non-recycled materials in a high abundance. And uh, we also have a lack of a specialized recycling system to deal with e-waste. That's the problem. So, what is the problem with compost? Quite different. Uh, when compost is placed into landfills, decomposition leads to an accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. 
Organic materials also tend to contain a very valuable nutrient compost, uh, com me, content, which can be repurposed for other uses. In America, we have a lack of local composting facilities, as well as a lack of education and outreach on how, where, and why to compost. Because of this, we have a lack of a local composting network, and the economic benefits of composting are not immediately apparent to people who otherwise would be able to. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jacqueline. Thanks, Greg. Um, so our client is the Lower East Side Ecology Center, and um, the Ecology Center has been working on the Lower East Side since 1987. Um, they started out mostly just doing recycling and composting for years, but they have really expanded their programming. So now one of um, their biggest uh, programs is working for New York City as their sort of outlet of the NYC Compost Project, which includes um, compost education for indoor and outdoor classes for the public and also in schools. And they also have um, a stand at the Union Square Green Market, which collects compost, which they process and resell. Um, they also collect e-waste at events around the city throughout the year. And um, they've actually recently acquired a warehouse in Brooklyn that's going to allow them to uh, increase their e-waste collection quite a bit. So they're looking to fulfill that. Um, they also do other environmental education on related to e-waste and composting throughout the city and also provide consulting through their EcoBiz program to small businesses on the Lower East Side. And um, lastly, they engage people in the community and organizations and businesses in stewardship of East River Park. So the Ecology Center came to us and was looking for a couple of things. Um, for e-waste, they want to really start expanding how much that they take in because of their new warehouse. They, uh, for compost, they're kind of fulfilling their spatial capacity and manpower, but they're looking to really um, reach out to the community in, in other ways and try to become more efficient in what they do. Um, they also were looking to do a wetland project to uh, serve as kind of the end loop of their compost process to process the wastewater from compost. Um, and they're also really looking to have us kind of innovate in this field, which is, has really high environmental impact, but has very little infrastructure, which can be a huge challenge, but also um, very uh, exciting opportunity. So now Becca is going to talk about relevant legis legislation. So in order to really understand this problem, we decided to better understand solid waste management in New York City in general. And it's becoming an increasing issue on our radar, and the main document that deals with it is Plan YC. And in Plan YC, they talk a lot about specific goals, mentioning that they want to reduce our impact on the waste stream, reduce how, many, how much compost goes in there, how much e-waste, but they don't outline specific um, goals for reaching, for achieving these goals. And so what that means is there's a lot of room for the development of community organizations, such as the Lower East Side Ecology Center, which really help the city achieve these general kind of goals of reducing waste and reducing compost and e-waste, but <coughs> not really necessarily knowing how. Um, as far as electronic equipment goes, New York State recently passed um, this Recycling and Reuse Act, which was initiated in three phases. And so the first phase really focuses on extended producer responsibility, which means the manufacturers of e-waste are supposed to make themselves available to take it back from consumers once, they're, once the e-waste is done in use. Uh, the second phase prohibits this e-waste from then being transferred um, in regular solid waste management facilities and has to be done in specific facilities for hazardous waste and e-waste. And the third phase, which is initiated in 2015, or will be rather, targets individuals, and individuals in New York State will no longer be able to throw away e-waste as part of regular waste stream, which means, once again, there's laws that we have to obey, but not necessarily means of doing the alternative, where the other side of the college center will also play a role. And so for our capstone project, we decided to take a multi-dimensional approach and split ourselves up into three groups. The first group being legislation, which really goes into more detail about the laws impacting solid waste. Partnerships, which expands on what kind of organizations the college center can work with in the future. And outreach, which really focuses on reaching more individuals. And like Jacqueline said, the Ecology Center had specific goals in mind. And so when we were making our recommendations, we wanted to keep these things in focus. And that we wanted to be innovative and use design in a new kind of way to help the Ecology Center expand into a different kind of field. But we also wanted to make sure we met the Ecology Center's needs and fit within the limitations of being a nonprofit with limited manpower and limited resources. And we also wanted to spread out to a new audience that doesn't necessarily already compost or are aware of these issues. And so we'll begin with the legislation group, and Austin and Tatiana will join me for that. And so the legislative approach 
our focus was really to look at laws, again, and really kind of examine how these laws impacted the ecology, ecology center and will do so in the future. And in order to meet our goal, we, again, split ourselves into three different approaches. The first was to examine the history of recycling laws in New York State and New York City to see not only how these laws have historically impacted the ecology center, but how these historical patterns might give us a hint as to what the city will be doing in the future as far as solid waste and anything goes. Our second approach was looking at current legislation and discussions, so looking at things like Plan YC, uh, at the city's solid waste management plan, looking at what the laws are now, but also perhaps more importantly, what will the laws be in the immediate future. And the third approach was looking at case studies. There are many successful cities particularly on the West Coast, that have successful curbside composting programs or e-waste recycling programs. And we wanted to see what about these cities was successful and how could their success be applied to a city like New York that is very unique. And so we wanted to see if and how this success could be applied. And in general, we noticed that the city, again, has goals. The city recognizes the emergency or the urgent nature of this problem. But there's not a whole lot that the city can do. We've, the city has tried, for example, several composting pilots that haven't been really <coughs> out. And so what this means is that the ecology center can play a really pivotal role in helping the city go further on reducing its waste impact. And so we've come up with several recommendations in our final project, but we're only focusing on two. And Austin will start us off with our wetlands composting recommendation. Thank you. 